Hey everybody, and welcome to a revealing Wild Ride with Steve-O. Man, I've been talking about it for a long, long time. Me and my girl, we're going to open up an animal sanctuary. Man, we're going to buy a big property. It's going to be great. And ladies and gentlemen, we are finally doing it. Where? <sighs> On how much land? Like, what? The, the wedding? Oh, find it all out and a whole lot more of incredibly revealing and radical news here on the Wild Ride Podcast. Now, get a little grind in on my new ramp and let's get into it. <laughs> How old is Mark Zuckerberg? I think he's like my age, 30. 30. Isaac, let's 36. see it. Let's guess. I want to guess are we 42. Or are we... Uh, because if he's anywhere near my age, I am challenging No, him. he's not. <laughs> <laughs> 39. 39. You think, wow. you, you think you can... How old is Elon Musk? 47. 46. No, 49. How old was Zuckerberg 52. when he became a Whoa. Why are they even talking about Elon Musk fighting when he's 52 years old? Okay. I think... Yeah. I, I don't want to swear words that close to the top. So here we go. We're going <laughs> to so we're gonna start off. Right here. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, me and Scott Randolph, Paul Brisky, Skinny Vinny. Yeah, dudes. With Isaac manning the computer for relevant information. That's right. Just let us know that Mark Zuckerberg is 39 years old <laughs> and Elon Musk is 52. But you just said... You asked his age, and you're like, I want, if he's anywhere near my age, I want to call him out. Do you think you got that? Fuck Do I think no. I have Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. Hasn't he, he been he, training? Like, isn't he? Dude, a, he, he's, he's like a, a, super ripped. Yeah. He's super dude, he's ripped. He's like a black okay. belt jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. Okay, check this out. Plus, he's like a psycho genius. He'll be like calculating everything, you know? <laughs> check this out, dude. TMZ Today says that now Elon Musk is not being taken seriously. Like, it's off, it's out. And now they're trying to pair up Mark Zuckerberg with an actual fighter from the UFC roster. Really? Wow. Like Mark okay. Zuckerberg is just going to fight somebody in the UFC. Oh, he'll get worked. Yeah, he's yeah. going to get worked. I is mean, this... who, do you give, who do you give him to? You know, like uh, CM Punk, let him back in the UFC. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, Maybe a chick? Okay, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Amanda <Nunes. laughs> I'm not trying to be an asshole. Just like uh, that, maybe that evens it out a little bit. He, a chick would fuck him up. Well, I, I, the thing is, dude, Mark Zuckerberg was uh, like legitimately in a jujitsu competition and won. Yeah, you can't help but hear that and speculate that like they gave him like the they let him win. But then again, at the same time, no. the dude is super ripped. He has an <clears throat> octagon in his backyard. Yep. He's training his ass off. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if he can handle UFC roster talent, but it's getting a little mm. bit interesting with Mark Zuckerberg. It, it looks is. like he rolled with Lex Friedman. Now, the reason why I said I want to challenge my Mark Zuckerberg and call him out is because I heard such good things about Bradley Martin calling everybody out with no intentions of fighting. He's just trying to get clicks. Oh, <laughs> he's calling he's Maybe, calling people out. Well, yeah, he's, street fights, like it's already just being big to help or... Maybe asking. you should fight Amanda Nunes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to fight her. anybody, dude. I don't want to fight anybody, dude. I've... Maybe Elon Musk, though, you could take. I mean, I guess there was oh, a size Elon difference, Elon Musk right? is huge. He's like six... 230 pounds. Is he 6'4"? Like, Mark Zuckerberg is like 145, and Elon Musk is like 230. Okay, now, like, but let's six, just say two. Zuckerberg and, and Elon Musk did fight. Who do you have? Zuckerberg. I mean... Zuckerberg. Yeah, for sure. I, but the, just the size. I think that the odds are very, very close in Zuckerberg versus Elon Musk because you really Elon think so. Musk is 230 pounds. Like, What's Zuckerberg's yeah, weight? Yeah, but like, dude, if, if they get to the floor, he's done with a jiu-jitsu guy. <laughs> and I feel like I know, Zuckerberg could thing. just I mean, run look circles. Look at when Israel Adesanya fought uh, Jan Blahovic. Jan Blahovic was able to just hold him down because he's that much bigger. Okay, that's true. He's Elon Musk like, professionals. Like, no matter how good you are at jiu-jitsu, I think when a guy is that much bigger and that much heavier than yeah, you. Yeah, but do you think, do you think uh, Musk has any sort of, like, 
background. Musk, or, Musk has a background in kickboxing. Now that doesn't help him in the grappling department. But he does. He does. Yeah. Now we don't want to alienate everybody with our high level combat sports knowledge. For sure. <laughs> 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 right? I mean let's give let's give everybody some uh so some some fun stuff to start off with. Here we are. We have no big guest in the podcast. Mm-hmm. We're thrilled that we've had some success with uh without having to get a guest. You know how much it stresses me out. You need you, a huge celebrity every week to mm-hmm. be able to do this without a guest and have people enjoy it. It's awesome. Yeah, you were really stressed out. I mean, fuck it. We were all stressed out. Right. about the numbers and the podcast growing and we finally tested out the no podcast or the new the yeah, no I guest was terrified episodes. to do you it. You were you were super terrified. And I was like, "Oh my god, it worked." Yeah, and the people loved it. Like I see more comments in the section saying, "Do more, do more, do more. Love this more than the guests." Have yeah, we announced like Paul mm-hmm. Brisky's big news? It's I don't been announced. I don't think not so. Not on this show, I don't believe. The gorgeous Paul Brisky Ooh, this is rough news for the ladies. <laughs> I got married, y'all. Wow. Oh, I didn't even see the ring yet. Oh, yeah, I got a little ring on. Fucking stoked, man. Yeah, I got married. That's sick. I remember asking you in the airport if you were going to get a ring, and you were like, nah. No, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, no. Dude, yeah. I was yeah. planning to get a ring Sounds for like sure. Sounds something you'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this whole institution thing about marriage. No, is... we were talking about because my wife didn't take my last name which you guys were like oh I don't, that would be a deal breaker for me and that was so, the conversation so on the honeymoon did your wife have dinner with another man <laughs> <laughs> no we had a really we had a really awesome time we had an awesome dinner it's killer man I'm so stoked to be married and you went to the courthouse yeah we did at the courthouse it was just the two of us it was epic and like yeah I, I wouldn't do it any other way was That's it the sick. best sex you've ever had in your life that night it was a wonderful time, and I. <laughs> very happy like to be more married. special though, like. No, yeah, everything was like they say marriage, like, or I've always felt like, what's the point? Like, there's no difference. If we want to break up, we'll still break up. Like, if we wake up and hate each other one day, like, what is the difference? But it does feel a little different. Like, I look at her a little differently now. Do you feel different? Yeah, I guess I kind of do. I feel That's a little cool. more like adult honestly wow that's sick yeah. are you still trying to move to arizona i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna move or not <clears throat> like we play the zillow game a lot we're always looking at houses here houses there Whoa. i mean i know you know about that zillow game yeah zillow game is fun but um are but i putting, have no idea i'm sorry just, no go ahead go ahead i just did it nice. it's your show <laughs> and i but dude i'm really really important to me to be respectful of the listeners and and uh, when I do that, I want to really take it seriously. Yeah, but they want to hear more from you than from uh, me. So, <laughs> um, are we putting this episode out before or after Mark Normand? I I feel like it makes more sense before. Before, then this will be my big announcement. The the animal sanctuary that Lux and I have been talking about uh, starting up. How we're waiting to get married ourselves on the property that we're going to buy for the animal sanctuary. We're doing it. We found the property. We're buying it. Offer's been accepted. Inspections are done. Now, uh, we just had a big scare about, like, uh, we can't get it insured because the, somehow they, you can't buy a house without first insuring it. And they, they're like, Steve-O? We're not insuring that guy. <laughs> really? <laughs> I really? Think so, I think so. Yeah, I, I don't even know why they know it's Steve-O, but, um, but, but I don't know. Like, if we had a, this morning, we woke up with a real terror attack that we can't buy the property. But um, I do believe we uh, are actually going to be able to. It was a false alarm. And the, the property is in Tennessee, reasonably close to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And God, it's so dope, man. It really is sick. Yeah, but now I'm having like a panic attack that uh, just how just to set up. I mean, like it, it occurred to me, okay, like our cars, we're not gonna drive all the way to Nashville to go to the house. You should get a pickup, dude. I can see you in a pickup out there, like a 1980s Chevy pickup, <laughs> stick shit. I mean, I think you need a pickup. <laughs> Like you yeah, have to you're have a, a fucking up. farmer yeah. now, bro. Like with that much land, you're gonna have a lot of shit to do. Like you're gonna need a pickup. Dude, we're gonna literally a lot of shit. Like we're yeah. gonna do, goats, we're... chickens. You yeah. gotta get overalls. You gotta get a, like that. I you can gotta see get you some steel toe boots. But dude, I'm gonna like some Paul Brisky's married. I'm getting married soon too. We're finally doing it. Yeah, 
We started and, a trend. Uh, and and we don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not sure about y'all. <laughs> now, whether you're getting married or not, you need to not be disgusting. Your bed cannot be disgusting. That's why you need Miracle Made. These are bed sheets that are infused with silver, which makes them temperature controlled, never too cold, never too hot. Plus, this science, which was inspired by NASA, is responsible for making sure that these sheets do not collect bacteria. Like 99.9% .9 of bacteria doesn't stand a chance, so your sheets are not gross. Now, get a load of this. The listeners of the Wild Ride Podcast, if you go to trymiracle.com slash Stevo, you get a free three-piece towel set plus more than 40% off your order. My God. And on top of that, it's a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be the best one of all. Go to trymiracle.com slash Stevo. Now let's get back to it. So what does that mean? Like, are you going to stay there most of the time? Like, what do you plan on going um, down with, like... I, I don't mind being completely candid about the fact that I am considering spending the required minimum of six months and one day in Tennessee to qualify as a Tennessee state resident and not pay state income tax. Mm -hmm. Same reason Joe Rogan moved to Texas. They don't have state income tax. Tennessee is, the, is exactly that way. Mm -hmm. No state income tax. So then that means like, and by the way, if you're on tour, doesn't count. Like if you're not physically in Tennessee for that six months and one days, then you're out of luck. So being on tour doesn't count. So I would have to take like my schedule and really, really meticulously say, okay, I can spend four months of the year on tour, then less than two months of the year in LA and a full six months and one day minimum in Tennessee, and then I qualify. And that, this is every year, right? I mean, any, any year that I want to qualify for a Tennessee state residency. For sure. But what if you, what if Tennessee was your only residency, your only residence, and you were someone who toured more than six months out of the year? Does that person pay state you, you tax somewhere? Like, how does that work? That, that's, uh, you know, like, what's that, that, Rogan having to do if he, if he were to be touring right. over six months? That, that becomes more of a, uh, tax attorney question okay you know like being that i'm a california <laughs> right. state resident like otherwise you know like i would say they would just default me back to california yeah you know at least yeah like, yeah okay and if it's I because got, you're gonna have two residences right, right and i don't know and i don't want to bore the listeners with this either it's just pretty interesting it's huge life stuff sure. for it's sure exciting, it's a huge dude. life decision man yeah, like, it's, it's huge it's life decision sick. yeah and and um if i'm honest I don't know that I want to spend that much time in Tennessee right now. Mm -hmm. Like what I want is to just start setting up that property. I want, I'm, I'm dying to get, uh, you know, registered like a animal sanctuary organization as a full on like legitimate charity and nonprofit, which is legally known as 501c3. That way, like we can start building like, <laughs> you know, build building it like, attractions pens you know like i'm kind of the radical ranch is what it's called man. that's sick now as far as the animal sanctuary goes is it going to be one specific animal or is it going to be a lot of different animals there are as i understand it 43 species of farm animals which are ideal for interaction with people okay i don't have any interest in exotic like lux no elephants I, lux and i don't want any elephants t tigers nothing exotic or weird yeah what we want is farm animals that need rescuing and can interact with people and we want it to be an attraction I mean, I'm really leaning towards it being an attraction. So, so you want that, people like a line of cars coming into your house every day? I mean, it's... Monday it, through Friday? It, it, it's... It could be like the Sir, Kelly Slater Surf Ranch. Like, it's special invite. You have, like, nice caravans for that, people to stay in. That's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's a big enough property 
that like we could talk. Mm, you could keep it separate. I so no one's actually I, going to your house. Right, right, yeah, right. Because I was going to say, like, there's going to be so many people that are going to be like, oh, fuck the animals. How I many acres see is Kelly right. I mean, like, Yeah, let's sneak away from this, yeah. like, tour and, like, go <laughs> try and find ducks. Steve-O. I He's around here. I want to pet yeah. Steve-O. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kelly Slater's is 20 acres. I mean, that was fucking huge. And you've so got more than that. that. You double that. Yeah, That's so I've sad. got uh, I've got over forty. Yeah. But then also your address is just very public, which whatever. I guess it ends up that way anyway, well, huh? It's yeah. kind of unavoidable. Yeah. I mean, it's a nonprofit. It's public. Yeah. It's financials right. are public. Now. I mean, we'll see what happens, man. But um, I uh, I know that this is what <laughs> we want is to have the animal sanctuary. I really want it to be um, able to sustain itself with like revenue streams so that because taking care of all these animals is not cheap you know like mm -hmm. we have to have like bed and breakfast like skate barn mm. you know like th th this and that like human hamster ball zorb you know yeah thing like we got to have all this stuff that makes people want to go there and uh you know want to like bring in revenue to pay for it yeah and, I mean, and it's I, epic, I don't dude. necessarily want to live there. I want to be set up there. I want to have that as the future. My dad is furious with me for uh, pulling the trigger on this. Really? Yeah. What did he want? He wants me to wait until the real estate prices come down. And I'm not waiting for that. I'm buying at the top of the market right before the crash. <laughs> yeah, the dumbest thing. Uh, so, so we put on there the stock market crash because I thought it was interesting that Michael Burry just shorted the market $1.6 on when he did the housing market crash, he shorted it like seven hundred million dollars, and now shorted the stock market. Yeah. Okay. So now he just shorted the S and P five hundred one point six billion. I mean, I believe we are at really. I said this on the Oliver Tree podcast, right? Like. Yeah. You've said so. it on many podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Great Depression level gnarliness, like on the horizon. I don't know why I don't feel that way. Like I think things will dip, ebb and flow always, but I don't. I don't really see that. Like I, with no knowledge of anything, I just you don't just really feel that that fear. Yeah, I mean. The thing is. I mean, this guy shorting the market is a pretty good is indicator. Is he a one-hit wonder? But Nay. no, he's a smart guy. He's done it a couple times. He's done so it a couple that's times. The, that's the question. So things will definitely take a dip. I think he's going to make his money like on what he's trying. But does that mean that people are going to be like? standing in the dust and like what in line for milk or whatever like all that like super super depression well shit. you can live off the land you can you have cows you can milk and that fucking. is absolutely the motivation as well as the animal sanctuary is to just have goat burgers cheese. burgers on deck yeah <laughs> you know you can have goat cheese and are yeah. you gonna build crop are you gonna do crops Dude, too dying sure. to have crops <laughs> dying to grow food yeah that'd be so sick like solar Dying to have the craziest solar farm. Windmills. I don't know about windmills, but uh, Tennessee's got wind. Well, there you go. That's electricity right there, I mean, baby. It's got sun. They it's have gnarly lot. winters too, right? Not gnarly. No. Tennessee's. Uh, it doesn't snow there, I don't think. I mean, they'll get like a couple inches, maybe. You know, but but the winters are not crazy, and the summers are not crazy. Yeah. Even though the summers are kind of crazy everywhere, like. Yeah. And it's humid, probably too. Like right? not yeah. as bad as Florida. Okay. Nothing compared to Florida. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we 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 covered the the Zillow. I yeah. have the marriage I have. and Zillow. Well, wait. Can I say one more thing about sure. my marriage? My wife and I have a podcast called the Elk Lodge Podcast. <laughs> so go check it out. We've done eighty three episodes, and we just had Yuka from the Dudesons on, and it was fucking awesome. So yeah, check it out. Outlaw yeah, I saw, I saw a few comments, as, actually statements saying, if Paul had a podcast, I'd listen. And, so I, now, and, I, and I replied, and I sent him, <coughs> and I sent him your wow, stuff. Wow, thanks, Vinny. Yeah, dude, yeah. So yeah, now you guys know. I do have my own podcast, yeah. the Elk Lodge Podcast. Attaboy. Anyway. How about we talk about the most epic skate party we had the other day? Ooh, all right. Oh, do you mean the skate party that refuses to end because I can't stop ripping? I'll tell you, since I got this ramp, I've just gotten more comfortable, learned more tricks, and when my lady watches me skate, I'm 
she's just turned on to no end and that means I gotta deliver the D and when I deliver the D I deliver real real good baby because I got my blue chew tablets they make getting in bed with my lady a whole lot more fun and if you're wondering if they might make that stuff a lot more fun for you too I think they will. I'm pretty darn sure of it. So go to bluechew.com to collect on an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets absolutely for free. All you got to pay is five bucks for shipping. It couldn't be easier. You go to bluechew.com, you use the promo code Stevo, you consult with the medical provider right there online. Boom, like that. You're signed up. You got an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. So one more time, go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo and get ready to have a lot of fun. Now, let's get back to it. It was, Definitely built a skate ramp in the backyard. Yep, and it's something you've been planning for a while. Been planning it it's, for a while. They, yeah, you know, on my Instagram stories, I said like, "Oh, since Bam personally attacked me, now I'm gonna build a ramp." That was so joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the the plan to build my ramp at my house was months yeah. before any of that even happened. And <laughs> the and, Bam beef was just luck. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, the party was sick, right? Like, who all showed up? You had. I thought we were going to have a lot more like crazy heavy hitters, like, uh, you know, people who uh, expressed interest, but like then like actually couldn't make it. There were a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But, um, dude. But the guys who did come. Dude, heavy. your call to invite Dalton Dern mm -hmm. was the money call. Dude, every time. I, I want Dalton to do everything that involves skating. He's the sickest. Dude, he's the sickest. He did a 540 on my mini ramp. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> An I mean, early yeah. grab 540. It was so gnarly. And uh, Garrett Jenner, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Yep. And the legend, Jeff Rowley. <laughs> Get yeah. out of here. We're all like, kind of like, look, that's Jeff Rowley. A little starstruck. Right over there, dude, dude, dude. Yeah. That's Jeff Rowley. <laughs> Yeah, like you said it to me in front of Jeff Rowley. You're like, he like did like a trick, and you're like, that's Jeff Rowley. <laughs> I mean, dude, I screwed up and said, dude, I've gone through countless pairs of your shoes. <laughs> I'm like, why did I say that? Yeah, I think we all have. Isaac, you, you said like 25 pairs. Best or something? shoes ever. And, yeah, and they he were so had sick. Like killer vegan ones too. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever had ever met before that? I don't think so. That no. was the first time you guys met. The nicest guy in the world. So what? You just so charming. Cold called him. Cold um, DM. He had reached out to me because he owns a, like a, a company that makes knives. Okay. And he does like skateboard manufacturing. Like if we need boards. Really? Like, what uh, kind of, and and what kind of knives does he have? He has like a knife company for I, cooking. Yeah, God, I forget the name of his knife knife company. But um, next time you're feeling stabby, think of <laughs> Jeff Raleigh. <laughs> I want a Jeff Raleigh knife. Yeah, dude, yeah. me too. Jeff. Oh, like Brad. a little work like, knife. What are they, it's pocket knives? Silverware. There Dude, we he go. was so nice, though. Like, this is a small thing, but, like, when he left, he's like, he said goodbye personally to every single person yeah. there, which is, like, one of those little things, but, like, everyone mm -hmm. got to leave being, like, cool. Like, I connected with you. No one felt like, oh, I was invisible to Jeff Rowley. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, he was so cool to say goodbye to every single person. Yeah. yeah. And not even, like, in a, like, I'm a big shot kind of way. He just was really kind. Yeah. Those are kind of really nice. Was. Yeah. Yeah, these are pretty dope. Civil Jeff Rowley. Civilware. Jeff Rowley's knife company. Oh, I get it. It is. It, yeah. Dude, Axes, he, 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 he gave me. He gave me hatchets too. Like, Did he? he sent me a box of knives and skateboards. Yeah. Well, for people that don't really <clears throat> skate that much, like myself or at all, how how legendary is Jeff Rowley? I mean, he was in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. So, like, even if you're not a skateboarder, you know Jeff Rowley. Yeah. That's how I. Know I mean, him. let's just say like when Steve was naming off everybody on the list like Jamie Thomas P-Rod all that I was just like walking and then he said Jeff Raleigh's name I just stopped really yeah I was, and I looked I was like what <clears throat> He's yeah, the a little most bit of epic. jizz dripped out of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a little for sure. Oh, just a little drip. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so we had a fun skate party. It was it's sick, like, um, dude. Oliver Tree. Plus, showed Dave up. England was there. Yeah, yeah. Oliver Tree. Oliver dude. Tree. Yeah. Oliver Tree's like the homie. Now. Yeah, he's like Oliver the new Tree bro. Is the homie, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, he, so we did the podcast with Oliver Tree. Yes. Then he came to the skate party. Mm -hmm. Then he came to my crash test dummy bit yesterday. Then he went to Preston Lacey's dinner party last. Oh, week. he did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fully infiltrated. I mean, he like it's not infiltrated. Be... Not infiltrated. I don't mean it in like well, a rude way. He has like, been. He's in. And yeah, absorbed. Yeah. He's been absorbed. Yeah, 
He's like LSD in your pocket that just soaks into your skin. <laughs> yeah. so, I know, but dude, don't even put it that way, dude. Like, I've, I've, no, I didn't mean like, it in a weird way. I don't like, but him, he's clearly bro. a fan, and he's he just like, he's in. He has not gone one place that I didn't expressly invite him to come. It's, yeah. Every time I've invited him, he's been like, dude, wouldn't miss it for the world. I'm yeah. there. He's and the best, so dude. Sick. He's cool. Yeah. And he and ripped so on your funny. ramp. Dude, yeah, he's so funny. Yeah. He, he, he ripped on my ramp. Dave England skated the hell out of my ramp. Yeah. Yeah, that was great, man. Um, and you dude, want- the Oliver Tree, like, I asked him, I was like, how, how big are the venues on your tour? And he's like, you know, like 5,000. He's like, but we do, like, two shows a night. <laughs> like, <laughs> two shows a night, really? I mean, I don't know. It sounded like he, he he's adding shows sometimes. So, like, Sick. in one city, like, he'll do, like, 10,000 people. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty big. Yeah. Like, uh... And we were checking his music out. We were jamming it in the car. We were jamming it in I the haven't car. stopped listening to it nice. since we had him, dude. It's kind of like it Big really grew, It really grew on Like it, yeah. electronic, though. It's cool. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your crash test dummy thing, which we don't have to talk about too right, much. Right, right. My but neck you do is have messed a... up. I got a, I got a uh, tattoo on my head right now. My head is uh, like big shaven, like as close as you can get it. Uh, I've got this this yarmulke tattoo. It's like, a, <laughs> it's like literally the crash test dummy logo. Um, on yeah, top of my head, and um, it's it's just yeah, and and my neck is feeling like awfully messed up because here I've gotten myself in this situation where I got to crash all the time now. You know, like <laughs> well, they, they, the first uh, the first crash has has messed up my neck um, for uh, for uh, I don't I don't know. I'm guessing the the next few days, maybe a week. Like yeah. I'm turn if I got to turn my head, I'm like turning my whole body. <laughs> Is it true that whiplash gets worse the next day after it happens? Um, I'm not going to go that far. It's about the same. Yeah. But I'm so excited about the ramp. I came home from whiplash. Yeah, skated it the went ramp. right to shredding. <laughs> went right to sk- Then I went out to Preston Lacey's birthday dinner and uh, came back and skated again. Yeah. <laughs> how was, was the birthday I was, dinner? I was, I was just skating right now. I'm like, oh, dude, i got to do the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how was the b- birthday dinner? Was it all of you guys? Like, who was dude, there? It was like the most random little like strip mall, like uh, like Armenian chicken joint. Like, uh, I have no idea what made Preston want to choose that. But we had Wee Man <laughs> out, um, uh, Wee Man, Dave England, Oliver macaroni. Tree, <laughs> Oliver Tree, Sam Macaroni. Me and a bunch of us had our ladies. Dude, Oliver Tree got such a kick out of getting to meet Sam Macaroni because he was like such a uh, Randy Rigatoni. Yeah, like yeah. he was like mentioned there so much. He's like Sam Macaroni. He's like, dude, it's great to meet you. He was so happy to meet <laughs> Sam Macaroni. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> he totally made up. Uh, what is it? Randy Rigatoni. <laughs> Nobody yeah. knows. Man, that Oliver Tree is really something. A creative guy. And you know what else he's creative about? His facial hair, man. Got that mustache kicking. And other than that, totally clean shaven. Now, if you want to be totally clean shaven, then you better get on over to harrys.com and use the slash stevo after that. Why? Because they got the five blade razors, best ones in the world. The weighted ergonomic craft handle, plus the the travel case to protect the blade and the foaming shave gel. All of that put together is the craft handle kits. And it is a $17 value, but it can be yours for just $10 if you go to harrys.com slash stevo. This is how I shave. It's the only way I shave. And it's what I love. Harry's shaving products. So one more time, go to harrys.com slash stevo to get that $17 craft kit for just 10 bucks. Harry's.com slash stevo. Now let's get back to it. Yeah, that, that, that was an epic day. Um, yeah, they, I, I've, I've uh, committed myself to getting into a lot of crashes and I'm super nervous about it. It's well, do you, I mean, we could, <laughs> yeah. it was great. Yeah, I mean, we could yeah. just give you a neck brace or something while you do the crash. Uh, the, or... the next crashes aren't going to be in um, a, a car. Wow. Well, they will involve cars sometimes. I know we can't say what we did yesterday, but are you happy with the results? Um, it's tough. 
I don't mind. I'll say it. I bought a smart car so they could crash it into a wall to make sure the airbags work. Yeah. While dressed up as a crash test dummy. Yeah. That to me has always been just a, a special, wonderful thing, and it's something that I really wanted to do. And um, the reality of doing that is that if if you if you want all that front end damage and all that like crazy like that, then you're not gonna be okay. Um, like I I think that. The airbags worked. I got gnarly whiplash. The footage is great. I mean, it's just funny. It the thing is. is like, 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 you can't look at that as like, oh my god, that's gnarly. Yeah, it's gnarly, but it's more of like, wow, that's just plain stupid. Yeah. You bought a car for no purpose other than to crash it, like, uh, and and you crash it properly. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, the the more the more I look at that that clip that you gave me. The more I love it, I type like I love it. It's so funny, and the the <laughs> my favorite is like, this is just to deactivate the airbags so that we can like do the rest yeah. of the filming. Like, right. let's get these airbags out of the way. Thank God the airbags worked. So now we don't have to worry about them for the rest of the bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, was, that was that was a really fun day, man. Yeah, it was an expensive day. Yeah, and uh, and, and a fun one. Um, and as and as I pointed out when I was getting my crash test dummy tattoo, um. You know, these bits that I start putting together, of course, the, this is the, the first bit for my Gone Too Far tour. Like, these last bucket list shows, I'm going to be presenting the crash test dummy footage. I'm going to be like... Start like working a work, out. I'm going to oh, start, yeah. uh, start working out bits for the next tour. So, like, the, these final shows of the bucket list are, uh, what do you call it? Like, I'm kind of hybrid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of hybrid. So, you're going to get extra... Uh, extra stuff, new stuff. It's dope. Yeah, and uh, the and and the the dates begin September first through September seventeenth. Okay, I've got some editing to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we're gonna yes, get that do. going. <laughs> um, so dude, th this is this feels fun. I, I this feels fun. I was all stressed out. I love doing these. Honestly, me too. Well, it's the only ones I do, so maybe that's. But like, they're so fun. <laughs> what were you stressed out. out about? I mean, I think just in, like everything and like buying the property in Tennessee. Well, dude, it's the biggest. It's like top five biggest decisions of your life. And right. You're getting married. That's another one. Buying a house. What's I mean, the other ones are like, you know. I'm doing them all in one go. <laughs> you're doing them all in one go. Every, like right when uh, I'm about to like shut down touring. Yeah. Like uh, like revenue. But you were stoked. But you were stoked like the oh my God, I love twenty it. minutes before that, and then you came in and you were like, I don't know. Like uh, my my manager Adam called uh, up before, and then that's all you have like to that. say. <laughs> I love you. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when you bought the property, was that like a one two three go kind of thing, no, or is that? I just knew it. Like we visited the property, and uh, I was just like, dude, all right. Like, how many did you visit before that? We did six in, in one, one day. day? We, we physically Whoa. visited six properties in one day, and, and I was just like, none of them, this, none of them, this is it. Like, yeah. Yeah. When you know, you know. And then what was it about this not, place not that you're like, oh, that's it? Um, the way that the, 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 the properties all spread out with, like, dense woods that create different fields. Like, you've Ooh. got very distinct different fields, like, that open up. And the woods like again are dense but there's like a properly like wide enough maybe to drive a car maybe not a car but certainly we went on a, one of those golf uh, cart side by side yeah golf cart for sure like this trail goes through the dense woods in a in a one mile loop around the whole property like the we met the owner and he's like yeah dude, i go around that loop twice every morning it's so oh, that's great yeah yeah like the guy built the house himself Wow, and he's like super connected and and uh, what year did he build it? Twenty seventeen. Oh, so it's pretty new. Man, that the, dude, the, all the internet sleuths are already on it. <laughs> yeah. They're looking at it on Zillow right now. It's <laughs> <laughs> like it's a three bedroom, two and a half bath. <laughs> it's got a fucking one mile exact loop with the yeah, yeah, yeah. that you drive up, <laughs> put the pieces together. Yeah. it's a beautiful yeah. house though. It's really awesome. Yeah, I mean, I I really hope to have a career for for a good while to come, so that we can uh, just keep building. I think that's the, the main thing stressing me out. It's just like to 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 build and build. Like, I mean, just what it costs to put this ramp in the back of the house, you know? Because we had to build the deck and then the 
It adds up yeah. quick. It adds up quick, man. When you have building going on all the time, like yeah. it's just money flying out the door. And so yeah, I, I'm building at my place too, and I'm just like you, they quote you on a price, and they're over, and you're just like, and you, you can't do anything about it. Right. It's fucking you know it's becoming an adult. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah, that's sort of a classic move with like construction. Like I know people work in construction and like you always try to make a bid, you know, like, to get the job, but everyone's <laughs> underbidding because once you have it, same with like selling a movie, like you give them like a low budget and then once you're ah. in, you're like, ah, we're going over budget. Like, yeah, and they sort of at that point, they're like, ah, oh, fuck, we're already in this deep. Depends on who you are. For a lot of movie directors, you go over budget. That's You're like a black mark fired. on your record. And then... All right. Well, at least for the construction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey. Well, this if this comes out Thursday, we have UFC 292 coming out. Do you have any predictions for oh, that? Oh, dude, check this out. Um, Pull up the card. Let's see who's on the, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you've been looking up a lot of shit today. Great job. I mean, dude, what, you got uh, Sean O'Malley and, and Aljamain <laughs> okay. Sterling. Oh, yeah, that's that, exciting. That, that, that's the main event. You've got uh, Zhang Wei Li against uh, uh, Amanda Limos for the co-main. Um, and uh, all right, the main card. So who do you got between Sugar Sean and Gary? It, like, dude, it's a great card. It's a it's a, it's a it's a great card. I. I I like all, all Joe. I saw all Joe in Tennessee because the Lux and I chose uh, to look at properties in Nashville, like strictly because there was a big UFC event in Nashville. They had a fight night. So like I called up Dana White's office and I was like, hey, you know, um, and all Joe was there. And uh, all Joe still gets a tough time, man. All Joe means Sterling. The reason why he gets a tough time is because he became the bantamweight champion on an illegal strike. Mm. It was an illegal knee. So the champion got disqualified. The champion was Peter Yan. And so people thought it's the first time ever somebody became a champion without winning. They just took an illegal strike. And um, that wouldn't have been controversial, but what happened was all Joe says, oh, I don't even want this belt because I didn't earn it, you know, and everyone kind of thought, oh, like that's, you know, there's a real integrity in that. And then the next thing you know, it's like, he's just like, you know, holding up the belt everywhere to pose him with pictures. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But there were a lot of people that looked at it and thought, ooh, he said one thing, he did another. Mm -hmm. And then the more that people were hating on that, then he, like, leaned into it and he just started trolling with it. And uh, he kind of turned it, a lot of people against him. So now he's in this position <clears throat> where, like, when they show him on the screen at the events, like, a lot of people are booing him. <laughs> but, dude, at this point... The guy has defended the belt. And he worked him. Dude, like, I mean, all Joe, and, and I heard people give him some booze, and I ran over. And, <laughs> and I, ran really? over to, I ran over to all Joe, and I oh, said. Oh, to all Joe, okay. Uh, you yeah. ran over to the people <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you dare <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I ran over to all, to all Jermaine Sterling, and I was like, dude, I respect you, man. You know, like, I just don't, I don't want to hear him getting booed. The guy, <laughs> the guy who, who gave him the illegal knee, Piotr Jan. Like, all Joe came back and beat him. Legit. Defended his belt against that guy. So there you go. Like, leave him <laughs> alone. Then he beat everybody else that he's fought. He's defended it over and over and over again. And he's a huge favorite against Sean O'Malley. Oh, really? Has yeah, Sean, he's gonna is Sean undefeated? Sean's will tell you, Sean O'Malley will tell you he's oh, undefeated. But there was one, like, contestable it, 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 loss? It, 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 Maybe two. Nah, uh, well, he, he, his his foot, and then the last one well, where his he... record is what like sixteen, seventeen, and one. He'll tell you that he didn't lose to Cheeto Vera, but come on, okay, yeah, <laughs> come on. Uh, How do you think? And I love Sean O'Malley. I love both these guys, so I don't want either one to lose. I'll but if you had to put, Aljamain's going to beat him I mean, with jujitsu. All, all Joe's a three to one favorite. There you go. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly who's going to win this whole card. Marlon Barrow's oh going to win <laughs> because go. he's the bra. <laughs> Black Shear is going to win because his name's sick. Ian Gary will win 100%. Oh, dear, Ian Gary is gnarly. Zhang Wei Lei is going to win. Zhang and Wei Li. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a casual. <laughs> and uh, Al Jermaine Sterling is going to win, even all though right. I love all of them. I, I mean, I feel like we, 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 we lose a lot of steam when we get too deep into the fighting. But, I, God, I, God, I love it. I, I love the fighting. But here, here's something interesting. Uh, I, the, the UFC Instagram page has, like, 28 
37 million followers. It's a huge The, the web page? You have the the Instagram. Instagram page. Whoa. The Instagram page has like 37 million followers. Uh, uh, yep, 37.4 million. So uh, <laughs> before the last pay-per-view, I see this Instagram collab post, Burt Kreischer and the UFC. Whoa. And, and uh, it's Burt Kreischer does a funny little bit. He, he says to his wife, he says, no, I will not have sex with you because it's UFC 291 tonight and Dustin Poirier's fighting. He goes into this like promo for the thing. So it's funny, like Burt Kreischer comedy mixed with the UFC. And like, it's just so genius. I saw that and I was like, God, Burt Kreischer's picking up followers off the UFC's 30 million <laughs> follower page, just absorbing followers from, from them. Mm -hmm. And so when I was at the fight at Nashville, and dude, how cool is this? We watched the fights in, in Nashville and it was the same, I shouldn't even say this, but it was the same night as uh, the Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz. Mm. And the UFC event ended before the actual Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz fight began. And uh, Dana White has this, he's always got this killer private room in the arena. So we go in and it's like, yeah, what's up Dana, you know? Hanging out in Dana White's private room. And lo and behold, Dana's got a huge TV and, and now Nate Diaz and fucking Jake Paul are walking out for their box. So we watched, sat down and watched the fights with Dana, we we've, we've sorry, we watched Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz yeah. with Dana White, and watching fights with Dana is so much fun. What do you think of that fight, the Paul and Diaz? Uh, fight? I wasn't mad at it. I think that the, the consensus is completely right that Nate Diaz wins even when he loses. For like, sure, there's nothing. There's 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 absolutely nothing that about that that tarnishes Nate Diaz's legacy. Mm -hmm. He got the bag yeah. and he did not. 20 million. 20 Is that million what it was, what? 20 million? That's off the wow. pay-per-views, that's what he made. That's amazing. And he so got, it, was he, a, it was like a is it decision? Is it, is it confirmed that he got 20 million? I think the next day I remember reading that he didn't get knocked out though, I, I, right? I, I, it was I, just I, a decision. Not. Like in the end, it was like a decision, yeah, or whatever. I mean, but you you could totally tell that he wasn't really. He didn't care. He, he didn't care. He wasn't trying. He didn't trying. care. He uh, did his. He kind of clowned him in the yeah, ring. Yeah, he was trolling he, him hard. He, he he made it fun to watch. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, look at who else Jake Paul fought. Uh, ben Askren knocked Ben Askren out cold. Like yeah. that, I love Ben Askren, but that's uh, and Tyson Woodley, the ty Tyron. Tyron Woodley, or Tyron Woodley, Tyron yeah. Woodley knocked out cold. Like, I would say that Ben Askren, the way he got knocked out by Jorge Masvidal with that five second fastest UFC knockout of all time, was like really like you know. That 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 like that's gonna be the 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 thing that looms over Ben Askren is like, yeah, more than the Jake Paul, more so than <clears throat> than the the Jake Paul knocking him yeah. out. Yeah, what's your what's your thoughts on Jake Paul uh, trans going to the UFC to fight? Uh, he or wouldn't M be going to the MMA, UFC, going he, to the to, PFL. Yeah, to uh, to fight Diaz. Ah, uh, he's gonna get work. Yeah, will, will that happen? I don't know. I mean, dude, the big any, age difference there. Though. I'll tell you one thing that. Uh, I no, but he's gonna get fucking Merc Daddy, dude. By Nate Merc Diaz? Wahlberg. <laughs> Merc Wahlberg. And fucking By Nate Diaz? <laughs> By Nate Diaz? In like a, a straight MMA fight. Yeah, and, and an MMA fight. Get. I don't know, man. A thousand percent. I'm, no, I'm like the I mean, least the, expert probably in here, but no, I don't know. I, I, Jake don't Paul's know. a strong young guy who trains a it lot. It doesn't matter. The Paul brothers have wrestling backgrounds. Yes. Don't forget that. Yes. So it's not. Uh, it's not guaranteed what, what's going to happen. Um, I'll, I'm not betting that there's going to be an MMA fight for Jake Paul. But I know that he did a deal with the PFL to make it possible. So hmm. we'll see what happens. So was it hard for Dana to watch Nate Diaz lose to Jake Paul? Because Dana White hates Jake Paul. I think he always said, like, well, if he would fight one of these, one of my fighters, he would for sure lose. Like, was it... Was there any reaction from Dana White? I, I don't. I, 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 you know, I think he's just interested. You yeah. know, I think he's just interested. I don't think it's controversial that Dana White watched that fight. 
I think, like Big Whip. Yeah. You know? Sure, and, it's his uh, industry. Like, he's, he would be yeah. paying attention to everything and going on. It, 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 like, uh, it's interesting as you watch it. There was no shit talking, like, uh, um, from Dana to Jake. No, I, I didn't know. I think it was just like, well, me seeing, like, yeah, well, here's th- this kid is 26. He's fighting a guy who's almost 40. He's like, you know, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like nothing like that's not just obvious and and uh, yeah, you know, normal. There wasn't any like real vitriol or anything like that. He wasn't like super invested in, in uh, being hateful. It was, just, it was it was interesting. Mm-hmm. It was super interesting. And 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 uh, the only reason I brought it up is because Dana White's social media guy Eric was right there. As soon as I saw Eric, I was like, dude. I saw that Burt and UFC collab. <laughs> I got to get in on that. <laughs> and so when you guys brought up UFC 292, we got all into the weeds talking about fighting. But what's important here is that <laughs> I have to smash Burt Kreischer's effort. <laughs> and, and I got to make a UFC 292 mm. promo to collab oh, post okay. with the UFC. So they gave you the green light? Yeah, for sure. Oh, sick. And Bert did it on 291. I'm doing it on 292. Oh, that's All right. sick. Yeah, three, four, five days. So. Oh, it's got to go up. Before Saturday, right? Well, yeah, you oh, said yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, three days. Oh, shoot. Wednesday's tomorrow. Oh, damn. <laughs> Thank God we had this conversation. I got to come up with a great idea quick. Uh, I have to smash Bert's effort. Maybe. All right. Yeah. I mean, you can get choked out while announcing it and see how long nah, it can last. I'm done with the choke outs, dude. If, if, yeah, if, and that if, last one fucked your neck up, If too. that last one messed my neck up and then what I did yesterday crashed. Yeah. Well, apparently car, he did the choke out wrong was what the I, consensus I, was. I, I, I saw Bisping. He in, was supposed to put it in the V and he put it on the forearm according to... I saw... Uh, dude, check this out. <laughs> I saw Michael Bisping in Nashville at the, the Nashville fight night. Mm-hmm. And uh, what were we in the? Yeah, he, Michael he came, he came to the bathroom. Like uh, came out of the bathroom. <clears throat> I was I was like, yo, dude, like um, there, I don't agree with everybody giving you. Or not everybody. I don't agree with anybody giving you grief. And he's like, huh? I was like on Rogan. This Matt, Matt Sarah. Sarah. Matt, Sarah, and Rogan were talking about you choked me out. He hadn't heard about it at all. <laughs> oh, just bummed him out, guys. Kind of like. <laughs> he hadn't heard about it at all. And I was like, uh, it didn't seem like he, you know, like if somebody, sometimes they'll make it seem, they'll say they didn't hear about it. I could tell he legitimately had not heard about it yeah, at wow. all. That's funny. And I was like, dude, you did it great, man. Those guys. <laughs> you're like, I don't care what Joe Rogan says. You're a nice guy. Like, that's like one of those things. You know? Like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Wow. So did he say like, oh yeah, like did he no, say no, any? Dude, did the he conversation was running continue? Back to the oh, okay. These guys, these guys run to go take a leak and run back. Like it was a terrible time to try to have a conversation <laughs> oh, <yeah>. with Bisping. <laughs> Hilarious. Wow. All right. Well, you have a hard out. Ah. Uh, Are you doing okay? Well, Steve's got the hard out today, huh? I've got I've got the hard out today. I'm gonna go get couples massage with Lux. That's sweet. That See sounds if, uh, like you could use it. With yeah. Your yeah, what actually, are you supposed yeah. to do for whiplash? Just massages and yeah. ice baths and saunas? I mean, saunas? dude, it's worse than whiplash. Not crash a car into like, a wall? It's worse than whiplash. Like, the most compromised part of my body is my neck with this degenerative disc disease. You degenerate. Yeah, like, I'm be- beating up the weakest part of my body. <laughs> and dude, what sucks... What this dude... Everything about that shit sucks. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Like, I do not do anything that makes the pain worse. Yeah. Shut no that shit. window, dude. I'm still skating. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing stopping me riding my new ramp. Let's go do a sauna and ice bath, dude. See if you um, like it. Dude, I got. what am I going to do to promote 292? It's uh, <laughs> Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley is the headliner. I'm bros with both guys. What if you make some kind of, well, like you'll do something for the winner. Like, I'm bro- bros with both. I want everyone to win, but whoever wins gets, like, something. Or it's got to be something that performs well. Where is it? For, um, what if you call up both of them, and you're just like, dude, I want you to fucking win. And you call the other one, and you I want you to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't have Andre's number. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in Bo- yeah. it's in Boston? Yeah, uh, it's in Boston. Um... TD Garden's massive. 
It, dude, I mean, the UFC is massive, dude. 19,000 people. Ah, uh, what was that thing that I saw since we got so deep into fighting? Uh, UFC changing the rules? Yeah, there's two two rule changes. One, uh, more time for eye pokes. I saw that. And it was like, if you get a cut, like... Or if you get a, like, a, a, like a, a headbutt or something like that, you have an access to a cut man in the middle of the round. Huh. I love that both of those are designed to keep fights happening. Like, more time for an eye poke. What, the, what, what that means is that they, they have more time um, to prevent a doctor from going in there and calling off the fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, at, uh, at, <clears throat> fighters will have access to a cut man after being cut by a foul or accidental headbutt. All right. I mean, I don't know what a cut man can really do. He could probably, like... Like, uh, is, is it like on Rocky when he's like, cut me, Mick, and he like cuts his <laughs> eye so the bl blood can come out so he can see and it's not swollen? Mm, Rocky by no, Jeff Riley this Knives. Is more about, like, <laughs> this is more about like, this is more about like a, trying to stop the bleeding. Or like, so a, like Nate, Nate Diaz in the Masvidal, they wouldn't have stopped it because he was bleeding so much. Uh, I, I'm just saying, like, if, like, what's access to the cut man doing? I mean, like when, it, like, when the round ends and you go and you get the cut man, he like, Uses the big huge Q-tip to, to put apply pressure, and then he puts the Vaseline, the Vaseline to try to stop the bleeding. Like, the, like yeah, ice brick that like maybe metal somebody can yeah. explain it in the comments. While oh, you're down there, smash the like button for comments. Yeah, <laughs> you like that. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's great. I just love the, I love the UFC. I love I love everything about it. And um, yeah, I was never really into the UFC until I started hanging out with you guys. So I'm trying to learn more and more. I mean, do, do you love watching it? Dude, I do. I enjoy it. I never, I used to watch it like when like Anderson Silva and Chuck Liddell were fighting, but then I stopped for a long time uh, and then got back into it recently. Man, turn your back. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I, it's fun, man. I, I'm, I'm like even more casual than Scott, who's like the casual of all casual. I, I remember, I remember. Scott's a confident casual, you know, like. No, I remember. <laughs> it, Scott's it, the funniest, and and, and and I did that one on and purpose. And you cut me off. I did that one on purpose. <laughs> Scott's the funniest <laughs> because he wa he watches all of the the MMA YouTube channels. He gets all the news, and he's got all the time in the world to listen to that, like the Chael Sonnen, like you know. But then when it comes to the fights. He like won't even bother watching, it, and then he'll Google the results after they happen. Yeah, or you know what I've been doing lately is like <laughs> <laughs> streamlined. Uh, lately, what I'll do is like I'll I'll, I'll watch uh, like a YouTube of like some nobody just like comment like oh it's left it's right and it's like I'm like in the fifties listening to the radio, but I'm like listening to the actual UFC fight live. So you listen to the UFC fights on the radio on the on YouTube. They're commentating. They don't show it on the screen. Are you watching the fight companion? No, no, no. I'm watching like actual guys that are like, okay, it's left from Diaz. It's right from you know. It's, and it's there. You'd prefer that? Yeah, kinda. Because <laughs> you can play Call of Duty while you do it. No, because it's like I don't know. It's just like <laughs> why I can, have the visual. Why, I'm like listening. It's like why waste my, my imagination. Eyes it's like time. in the '40s. And I'm at, sitting in my chair in the living room listening to the, the Dodger game. Are you, like, whittling as well? Like, why do you want to yeah, live in the 40s? Yeah, I'm playing solitaire. <laughs> yeah, like, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to live in the 40s. He's in his 40s. That's what you said, right? <laughs> no, no. Like, I'm no, in the 40s. No, he feels like he's in the 40s. Uh, I listen to, like, radio, a boxing on the radio. Around the radio, I'm, like, listening like it's, like, a Dodger game. I, it's just I like it better in my brain. It's, like, an imagination. <laughs> okay. Um, well. What was, uh, you let the guy who tattooed my head, Mike Santa Fe, you said you can have my house. Because you were going on a date. Yeah, I went on a date. Did you, did you convert points on the board? I, uh, yeah, we watched the... <laughs> <laughs> what radio program did you listen to? His voice went a little higher on that. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Did it? Watched, yeah. I thought my voice went lower, but maybe I'm just in my head. And chill over yeah, there. it was a nice night. Yeah. We watched the, uh, the, there was a meteor shower that was out. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's <laughs> Yeah. So did you did you shower this person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was it was a pleasant evening. That's all I have to say about that. All right. Shower Good man. Well, hey guys. Most. Um, I think that that uh, the the title for this one is the, the big news. You know, like the, the big, big news. news about like uh, I don't know. I mean, well, the big it, news. Big I mean, news. Paul, you your house, Vinny. 
I'm actually getting married. Like, I've been engaged for well over five years. <laughs> and now I'm actually going to get married. Right. We don't have a date, but we've got the property, and that's what we were waiting for. You got the property. So the big you're announcement is that you're still engaged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paul. That you're still planning to get married. Yeah. <laughs> Not that Paul got married. <laughs> Big news, guys. Still, Still going to plan to get married sometime, <laughs> somewhere. Well, we know where now. Yeah, that's good. That's huge. <laughs> Congratulations. It's <laughs> a big step. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, everybody. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> How about that, man? A lot of UFC stuff, but shit. I love the UFC. You know what I love even more? My new ramp. Yeah. Okay. Let's get that front side 50-50. Boom! Uh, yeah. Give me a little bit of... Ah! <laughs> yeah, dude. And as always, man, thank you guys for sticking around to the very end. Just for the people who can see on YouTube. Look at the stain job. Look at the ramp. Look at the floodlights. It's so beautiful. Yeah, dude. That's it for me, baby. Come up to my back. <laughs>